must come in at the door. Hallelujah. Come on, stretch your cross and pray. Brothers, y'all sung today. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, squeeze that hand. That means in spite of all you've been through, you still have something to shout about. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you're so awesome. You're amazing. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We don't take you for granted. But Lord, we thank you because there's somebody who even in the midst of the cold, we're chilly in here, but they don't even have a home to go to. They don't have an address. We ask God that you bless them now. We God, we thank you for this moment. We want to praise you as though it's our last moment. Father, we need to hear from you this morning. Still our minds arrest our attention and God speak to us. Father, I pray God that you anoint me afresh because I'm just a man and I need you, God, to speak through me. But God, I'm willing, so if you talk to me, God, I'll say what you're happy to say. Send a fresh anointing. Less of me, oh God, more of you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. We're in this, we're in this faith series, we're in this faith series find ourselves again in 1st Kings chapter 17 where we're going to be dealing with pretty much in February 1st Kings chapter 17 we began a little introduction on it last week and, uh, we want to unpack some things in the text uh, that I think are going to bless our lives uh, and I usually don't read this much but I got to read 1 through 10 today so you can kind of get the context of what's going on in the story 1 Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishbite on the, of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise. Go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Watch this last verse. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. I'll stop there today. In the second series of this faith installment, I want to talk about ridiculous faith. You may be seated. Ridiculous faith. Say that with me. Ridiculous faith. Last Sunday, we learned that this man of God, Elijah, he shows up out of nowhere and he talks to big bad King Ahab. In verse 1, it says, as the Lord God of Israel lives before who I stand, there shall be no rain nor dew for these years except 
at my word. Then God tells him in verses uh, three to five, he says, listen, Elijah, I want you to get up from there, turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherub, which flows into the Jordan. Watch this, y'all. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. And it says in verse 5, we talked about this last week, so he went. Elijah moved to a blessed place called a brook. And we learned on last Sunday that when God comes to you here to move you there, that you can move because your there has already been set up. Can I get a witness of you? That God has already set up your there, even if you don't know what your there will be like. Because we talked in our conversation last week, just getting you up to speed. A blessed place is not where you have things. But a blessed place is a place where God is moving. And I know I got about two witnesses. Listen, it doesn't matter how much stuff I have. I just want to be where the presence of the Lord is. Because if you're where Jesus is, that's where your blessing is. Now I want to unpack some things for us today in this text. Amen. I, I, I want to deal with this passage a little further. Uh, and this text today teaches us that if you do the ridiculous... You can watch God do the miraculous. I'm going to talk to my friends over here. I said this text teaches us that if you do the ridiculous, you'll watch God do the miraculous. You're not feeling me. Maybe I don't have anybody who's, who's ever done anything ridiculous, but when you do the ridiculous, one of the things that I've discovered, um, and I'm going to teach you before I preach you, one of the things I've discovered about God is God seems to never give us easy instructions. It seems that there's always a little struggle and always a little challenge in divine direction. Even when you're walking in favor, is there anybody that knows there seems to be something always that comes up and gets in the way. And that the, the, the very definition of favor implies challenge. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, to have favor means, listen, y'all, I've got something that I shouldn't have. Let me say it this way. To have favor means I, I've got something that I shouldn't have had as a result of what was standing in my way. Favor is it's in my way, but I still got it. Let me, give, let me give it to you like this. Some of you grew up in a bad home. In a bad neighborhood, in a bad family situation, but somehow, with all that in the way, you still made it out. Tell somebody to say that's favor, that's favor. It doesn't mean that stuff is not in your way, but somehow you make it through. But there's somebody in here, amen, on your job, you don't have the most education, but somehow you got a job that you weren't even qualified for. Talk to y'all, y'all quiet over here. Now, tell somebody say that's favor, that's favor. Some of you know you're low on the total pole at work. You don't have seniority. You've been there, watch this, you haven't been there as long as everybody else, but somehow you got the promotion. Ain't nobody. Do. That's because you have favor. The doctor came in and told you a bad report. But you went back the next time. And he said, what I saw the first time, I don't see no more. That's because you have favor. I wish I had a witness in here. That's why I don't understand why folk get upset with some folk. Because they have favor. Because you have favor don't mean I don't have challenges. Because I have favor don't mean I don't have to go through nothing. But in spite of it all, I can rejoice because I don't deserve it, but I still got it. Just many people say, I still got it, I still got it. I still have it. I'm getting a little bit warm now. I dare you to touch seven people say, favor, favor, favor. Come on, don't be jealous, don't be stuck up. Come on, come on, favor. I speak favor over your life. I know you're going through challenges. I know you're going through trials. But when it's all said and done, you're going to be standing. Because you're not... 
Can we ask now? Watch this. Now, nah. watch this. God, even with favor, allows obstacles and challenges because God is not just interested only in blessing you. God is interested in growing you. Oh, I ain't got no friends in here today. Is there anybody that understands you got to go through so you can grow? Woo, I feel like preaching in here. Is there anybody that knows you have to go through some of the stuff you went through in your life? You would not be as wise as you are now if chasing the easy street. Yeah. Yeah. We love to come to church and get excited when we got the job easy. I don't have no friends in this section right here. Yeah, right there. I need some help. We, we love to come to church and we love to shout when you got the car easy. We love to come to church uh -huh, when we can make all the payments. When the marriage is going well, we love to come to church and shout when we went to the tax man and you got a tax return. But I hear the Lord saying, that ain't the way you really get to know who I am. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. I hear God saying, you get to know me when hell breaks loose in your life. like preaching in here. You get to know me when hell breaks loose in your life and I start doing stuff for you and I start moving for you and I start elevating you in spite of what you're going through. I wish I had somebody in here that knows God is blessing you in Who am I preaching to in here? Who am I preaching to today? That can say, I to know God in a real way. Not when things were going easy, but when God made me struggle. God, God, come on, y'all stay a while. Watch this. God, yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo! God will call you, God will call you, God will call you to do some things that sound ridiculous. Watch the text. There's a drought in the land. Verse 2. God says, preacher, Elijah, go down to a brook. You're going to find water to drink during the drought. Y'all don't know when to shout. I like to say it again. He says, I want you to move from where you are. Go down to a brook. You're going to find water to drink in the drought. That's how you know you have favor. When God hooks you up with stuff that everybody else can't have. Look at somebody say, it's for you. It's for you. And that's ridiculous. Now, here's, here's what's ridiculous. Here's what's ridiculous. Because the water that's in a brook is only flowing and sustained in the brook by the rain that comes. But in verse 1, Elijah, you just said it's a drought. So a brook is only filled with as much water, with as much rain as you get. Which means that if it's a drought in the land, 
and there's no rain anywhere in the vicinity, the only water that's going to be in the brook is the water that's already there. So God, you're sending me somewhere only for a season because the water's going to run out there. I'm going to catch it in a minute. So if Elijah is to drink the water that's in the brook, it's only going to last but so long. Because he's about to drink what's there. And a drought is not going to bring water to replenishment. So he's going, <laughs> he's going down to some water that needs more water to keep having water. And, and he's going to drink the only water that's in there. <laughs> and there's no more water coming to replace what he drinks. Because the Bible says in verse 7, after a while, watch the text, the brook dried up. The brook dried up, watch this, because there was no more rain in the land because it's a drought. So that means that Elijah already knows that where God is sending him <laughs> is only a temporary fix. The problem with us is God tells us that it's only a layover and we want to make it our final destination. I'm talking to somebody in here. I tell somebody, say, you was only supposed to stop there and not stay there. Or they ain't talking to you. Find somebody else that ain't bougie and say, neighbor, maybe it ain't working because you were supposed to just stop there and not stay there forever. Queen, they don't even get what I'm trying to tell them today. Now watch this. That's ridiculous. You're sending me somewhere in a drought, Lord. And after a while, the water I drink will be no more. Tell somebody that's ridiculous. But then God says, oh, I feel like preaching in here. After the brook dried up, he says in verse 9, Arise, Elijah. Go down to a place called Zarephath in Zidon. And I want you to stay in Zarephath. Oh, God. Well, this is ridiculous. Pastor, what's ridiculous about Zarephath and Sidon? I'm glad you asked. Sidon, watch this, is the region where Jezebel's daddy, Ithbaal, is the king. All right, wait a minute. Let's go back to verse 1. Elijah stands up and looks at King Ahab who's married to Jezebel and says there ain't going to be no dew or rain except at my word. Now when I fast forward to verse 9, I got to let you know Jezebel don't like Elijah. Because of Ahab. God says the brook is dried up. Go down to Sidon. God is sending Elijah to a place where Jezebel's daddy is the king. Y'all missed that. Jezebel is Elijah's number one enemy. God tells Elijah, I want y'all to get this, to go to the region where his enemy's daddy is king. Now, if you, if you look at the, uh, the geography of the text, to do that, to get there, Elijah's got to go through his own country and keep going through his own country. Watch this. Which means he's got to pass through comfortable and go into a conflict. I wish y'all would hear what I'm preaching in here. He has to pass through what's familiar and now go into a conflict. God doesn't tell him to go where folk are there that like you. Ain't nobody talking to me in here. God says this time, I want you to go to a place where folk can't stand you. I don't know about y'all, but that's just ridiculous. Can, can y'all be honest? Has God ever given you some instructions? 
that sounded absolutely ridiculous. Is there anybody who ever had God tell you something that you had to turn your head and say, God, I know you ain't talking to me. Well, y'all not going to be honest today. I, I know you ain't telling me to do that. I know, I know you ain't telling me to love them after all they've done to me. I, I know, I know you ain't telling me to give them more money and they already owe me money from last year. I had a witness in here. I know you ain't telling them, uh, uh, telling me to pray, yeah, Jimmy. I know you ain't telling me to pray for them. I know you ain't telling me to leave that job. I know you ain't telling me to stay with that Negro when they get. Are you talking? Because God, I feel like it's just free. In both instances in this text, Elijah did the ridiculous and God did the miraculous. Can I show you one more time this review and I'm out the door? Let me show you why the brook was ridiculous. Watch this. If you don't remember nothing else I tell you today, God says if you do the ridiculous, I'm going to do the miraculous. Now watch this. At the brook, rewind. Watch this. Watch this. God says you're going to go to something that you know is not going to sustain you. It's ridiculous. Y'all looking so sedity today. It's not ridiculous. God, you're going to send me to a job that makes less than minimum wage? And you think I'm going to eat off of that? That's real. I thought y'all get it now. Watch this. When he went to the brook, rewind. God says, now watch. I'm going to sustain you. Because I'm going to send ravens to feed you every morning and every night. I'm going to say it again like I said it last week. Give us this day. I tell you. Is there anybody that knows you've been in some situations? But somehow you still eating. God, keep on. Well, I wish I had somebody that don't have a lot, but you know God has taken care of you. I wish, I wish I had some folk that don't know how. When you got more money than bill, you keep doing the thing. I'm going to feed you in the morning. 
And I'm gonna feed you every night. Now wait a minute, y'all. Ravens, watch this. Watch this. Y'all ain't even get to the shout point yet. Ravens are gonna feed you. Ravens are birds of prey. Ravens eat what they find. Ravens are not in the business of bringing stuff to anybody else. Because if they have something in their mouth, they're eating it themselves. Preach, Pastor Washington. Here's the shout point. God says in your next season, I'm going to make the thing that would normally want to eat you bring you food to eat for yourself. Let me translate that. I'm going to bring the thing that tries to destroy you and make it the very thing that's going to bless you. Oh, I wish I had a weakness in here. Has God ever done the miraculous in your life to make folk bless you that normally try to tell you now? Anybody in here has some ravens in your life? That normally try to cut you up, try to bring you down, and God is so awesome. He makes them bless you because he sandwiches the miraculous in the ridiculous. I'm preaching to y'all here today. Watch this, I got about seven minutes. Come on, give me seven. Now, come on. now the text says, watch this. Come on, y'all yeah, yeah, sit down a minute. Next time you stand up, you can stay. Watch. Now, you at the brook. Watch this. God says the ravens are going to feed you there. So if you stay at the brook, I'm going to bring bread to you through an unexpected source. Some of you have been praying for God to do something. And it's going to come through an unexpected source. Watch this. Watch this. Let me help some of y'all. It's tax season. You've been praying for a blessing. And the blessing ain't even your good tax return. Because God's going to send something else. Oh, preaching to it here. I know the number's higher than last year, but God said, that ain't even what I had for you. Eyes have not seen. Oh, shucks. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. I'm trying to hold my peace this morning, but I feel something pushing me. God says, I'll have a raven. Watch this. Come find you and bring you what you need. Don't go looking around for it. Because I commanded them to come to a certain spot. And if you're out there looking for the blessing yourself, you're not going to be in the spot I've ordained for the ravens to go to. So you're going to miss your moment. And you're going to miss your miracle and you're going to put your blessing if you're not at the right place. At the right. Y'all got it. I'm getting ready to fly now. Watch. God says, because you stayed where you were, I brought your blessing. But Elijah, I know it's good here by the brook, but uh, I got something else ridiculous for you to do. I want you to leave where you're comfortable. I want you to leave the daily bread. Now I want you to go to enemy territory. Tell somebody, say, that's ridiculous. But y'all ain't seen nothing yet. I'm getting ready to close. I feel my Baptist preacher voice coming on here. He says, get up, verse 9, and I want you to go down uh, to a widow's house. And the widow is going to provide for you there. <laughs> 
Do y'all understand widows in biblical times? See, I understand we got these big insurance checks now. <laughs> that when daddy died, mama's good. <laughs> but back then, when daddy died, widows were marginalized people in society. They barely could take care of themselves. So God, you're sending me to a widow's house who hardly has enough to take care of her. God, that's free. Widows were not poor. Widows were poor.
And I wonder, is there anybody in here today that's made up your mind that I have enough faith to trust God to do the ridiculous? Have I got a witness in here? God ain't got no money, but I need a house. That's ridiculous. But I've come to tell you, if you've got the faith, God has the power. Have I got a witness in here? Can you shake that neighbor's hand and tell him for the first time, if you've got the faith, God's got the power. Tell him, step out. Home faith. Have I got a witness in here? Is there anybody bold enough to ask God for the ridiculous? God, I don't have the education, but I want that promotion. That's ridiculous. But I can hear my grandmother saying, there's no secret what God can do. Hallelujah. Shake that name ahead for the second time. And say, neighbor, there's no secret what God can do if you ask him. He's able to supply your needs. Y'all don't want to have no judgment here. And I got a witness in here. Ooh, I feel something pushing me in here. You gotta be bold enough to ask God for the ridiculous. I hear somebody say, Lord, I don't have good credit, but you know I need a call. I hear somebody saying that's ridiculous, but I hear God saying that when man things are impossible, but with me. All things are possible. Have I got a witness? I got to get out of here. But I've come to ask somebody. Did you come here today with a ridiculous praise? Because a ridiculous praise is the breeding ground for a ridiculous blessing. Have I got a witness? Oh Lord. And if the Lord's been good to you, you ought to stand up and look back over your life and get him a praise, not an ordinary praise, not a mediocre praise, but a ridiculous praise. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. For the last time, you ought to go to a neighbor and shake their hand. For the last time, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them and say, hey neighbor, I don't know what you want God to do for you, but tell your neighbor praise 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 him like you're ridiculous open up your mouth throw your hands up and say Lord bless me now but before you bless me I'm going to give you a ridiculous praise I'm going to give you a ridiculous worship I need my praisers at the altar to come with your hands lifted up if you want a ridiculous blessing let the world know I'm getting mine I'm going to another level I'm getting a promotion I'm getting a scholarship I know you think it's ridiculous but if I do the ridiculous God will do the miraculous won't God do it won't God do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he do the miraculous yeah yeah he will won't he do it give him a ridiculous praise praise him like you're crazy Praise them like you lost your mind. Open up your mouth. Say, Lord, do not pass me by. Lord, I'm waiting on it. Lord, I'll praise you for it. Lord, I will bless you at all times. Give them a ridiculous praise. Wave your hand, leave for joy. Open up your mouth, 
say Ridiculous blessing. It's gonna blow your mind. It's so big. Your family gonna be shocked. It's so big. It's gonna blow. Oh, shut your. It's gonna blow your mind. It's so big. When you get it, we're not gonna believe it. Tell somebody believe it though. Believe it. Cause can't nobody. Nobody, 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 do me like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wait till the battle's over. Lift your hands, throw your head back. saying if you praise me I'm gonna give it to you come on don't be what you've been praying for I'm gonna give it to you what you believe in me for when you turn around this time you're not gonna be the same again now somebody ought to in the spirit you ought to be able to see your change I know this seems ridiculous but when you turn around you're turning around into your next season on the count of three you're about to turn around into the miraculous I want you to praise God like you lost your mind one I feel something two you ought to already be opening up your mouth you're about to turn into the miraculous three times Praise Him!